What is up? I'm Moana Turtle. So today we have a very different Pokemon kind of video uh, that revolves around PSA and specifically the base Charizard, the unlimited Charizard. And we're going to try to figure out what it takes to get a PSA 10 or Gem Mint 10. Um, but maybe to start, we're going to talk about the population report and kind of like how much that card is worth. It's actually pretty, um, it's very impressive how that card is performing right now. So we're going to switch over to a website called PokemonPrice.com. It's actually super useful. I feel like it does a lot of cool things uh, where for, I'm not sure about all the cards, but at least for uh, a lot of sought after cards, it does a very good job of scraping, uh, like I'm guessing scrapes PSA uh, for the population reports. Ironically, they have the wrong picture here. So we're not talking about, uh, we're talking about unlimited and um, not only is this great PSA, but I think it looks through like eBay history to also get a gauge for how much the card is going for right now. So for the PSA 10 Unlimited, so again, ignore this first edition in the Shadowless, um, there are less than 400 PSA 10s and over 4,000 PSA 9s. So it's a little bit less than a one to 10 ratio from PSA 10 to PSA 9. And then as far as how much they're going for, uh, again, they have a lot of a lot of really interesting data. So for PSA 10, the blue, uh, the prices is crazy. It's going, it's gone, still uh, maintaining a very high, somewhere between uh, 12 to 17 hundred dollars for a PSA 10 uh, base unlimited Charizard. Um, however, I think I was considering buying one uh, towards the beginning of the year, and I wish I did. It was like, like you, up about a thousand at that point. But then if you just look back to a couple of years, we're talking like a uh, hundred percent increase where you could get it for um, on the low end of like 600 like or mid 500 um, I feel like this 3000 is a bit of an uh, outlier I'm not sure what happened there but as you can see uh, PSA 10 it's going for quite a bit and then if we were to drop that out and actually let's see if we can look at the PSA 9 um, data and so this one is significantly less so um, oh wow 800 what is this I do think that sometimes there is miscorrect data where it says it's a unlimited. This thing uh, assumes it's unlimited, but it's not. So I'm, uh, I'm wondering if this uh, actually for even a shadowless 8, 750 seems uh, incorrect. But for the most part, a majority of these things are in the high 100s, low 200 range. Uh, so the difference between 9 and 10 is ginormous, especially when it comes to price. Uh, but how about the difference, actually, and if you're curious, this website is super useful. It'll just kind of scrape eBay to try to figure out what was the last ones. So for in uh, end of June and then first day of July, there were two sold, uh, one for 1500 and one for 17. Uh, and that's the base unlimited Charizard. So. Uh, we're gonna go switch back to this and so we're gonna try to figure out together what makes a PSA card a 10 versus a 9 so I do have some cards so I do not have a PSA 10 Charizard that's uh, that's kind of like the goal of this video I guess uh, so we're gonna compare some a 6 to a 9 and then we do have a PSA 10 Venusaur uh, to try to figure out what is the secret sauce to make that PSA 10 so we're gonna start with a 6 see what we can figure out so right off the bat, so one thing about the PSA cases, it, I feel, find that these edges, although it's probably necessary to protect the card, it makes it hard to see the edge wear. That's the only thing with trying to deduce from already graded cards. I find it kind of difficult, but if you have to look kind of closely, you can actually see that there is edge wear on the top, uh, quite a bit of it. I can't remember if there's some on the bottom. Yep, you can see the nicks on the bottom as well. Uh, the corners don't look too bad, although they each have a little, uh, just actually quite a bit of damage there. So PSA 6, um, the bar's not that high for a excellent to mint 6 for a Charizard at least. Now people have specul- I feel like I've heard speculation based on like what the card is actually does make a difference based on how old it is. And so looking at, so this one is a near mint 7. Let's see what we can tell. Um, less edge wear that's for sure and I think once again the 7 and 8 I find it very difficult to tell the difference between the cards at least when it's in the PSA slab the centering I don't know it feels like a little off maybe this side's a little thicker maybe but yeah I feel like I don't see a lot of damage maybe there's something going on up here but not really so when it comes to kind of like pre-grading your cards this is where I'm looking for some experts uh, to help me narrow down I, and like maybe there's surface damage but I personally can't seem to figure out where it is so yeah what makes this card a 7 and I highly doubt I would send it to be regraded 
but I feel like I'm more confused, but I'm assuming there is something that I'm just not seeing. And then we'll move on to PSA 8. I think this is where now things get very complicated to figure out why a grade got the grade it did. And I still, maybe there's a better way to look for surface scratching, but I can't see anything. I feel like some, some uh, angles I could see something in the corner, but. All right, so this one, I wonder if it's the centering, because oh, you can see that this bottom or this side is thicker than this side by a little bit. The corners do have, I don't know, very minimal nicks, but I guess they're still there. So, yeah, minimal nicks plus, I don't know, maybe a little not centered perfectly equals the 8, I guess. And then moving on to the 9, this is the obviously the highest grade I do have. And again, it's then you have to, you're dealing with, I mean, this one has a little additional cover sleeve for the card and then in the slab itself trying to figure out what why the grade got degraded it's just very difficult so this one, i feel like there's maybe something on this corner you can see a little bit a couple white nicks and now that I, that does make sense to me so a couple of white nicks and then, all right you're starting at a nine right from there and i guess that's all it takes so and however let's compare contrast that one with a venusaur 10 uh, definitely won't find any surface wear unless it's a misgrade but I mean this one I feel like you could spot a very small nick right there so that's what I mean sometimes the only things that I can see don't automatically disqualify it from getting the 10 uh, so sometimes I feel like cards have get away with one itty bitty nick in the corner and still get that 10 Centering, not surprisingly, looks great. But then, so then we'll look at a couple of my Charizards to see if anything possibly warrants the 10. Um, so, this is a kind of like a, uh, some that I've had, and right off the bat, a majority of them will just, you know, I mean, this one, I feel like at best we're looking closer to that 6 that we looked at first with tons of edgeware in the top and bottom. And looks like same thing here so actually this stack I kind of already separated out some stacks but these I feel like these ones would probably get I mean uh, maybe this one could get a seven but again when I was looking at no back to six but when looking at those slabs I find it very difficult to identify all the reasons it would got the grade it did but a majority of these oh that one's really bad do have significant edge wear to a point where it's all right maybe it's not even worth submitting these to PSA all right that one's terrible yeah these are for the most part these are just really worn down um, and yes in case you're curious these are all Charizards but don't think any of them are going to be grabbing any crazy eye grades why were these flipped in different direction or maybe these ones do have some potential uh, no we see still see some wear down on the bottom and this one on the top so I feel like these this whole stack is like sevens tops but again if you um kind of looking for some advice from people that have more experience uh while i do have psa graded cards i've actually never submitted any of my own for grading so these ones i selected they were not as bad as those ones and but however this one has to do has does have a significant nick on there so i feel i'm guessing this is kind of like an eight tops probably less Let's see what we have here and sometimes I feel like only at certain angles you can see it. So I can feel like there's some wear at the top on this card. Um, but when you look dead on, it's hard to see. And maybe that's why it's hard to tell when the card is already in its slab. But yeah, there's a couple nicks on the bottom as well. Uh, so in case you didn't know, I feel like 90% of the damage is always on the back. At least edge wear when it comes to edge wear. Obviously the front and as far as the foil goes, there can't be any kind of uh, scratching. This one looks free of that, but again, the back kind of disqualifies it. Same thing here. Oh, quite a bit on the bottom as well. So yeah, I, I guess that it, it does make sense that like the that ten to one ratio between nine and ten. Ooh, this one's. What do we have here? Uh, that's a pretty significant nick 
Maybe this one... I wonder if this one can fetch a 9. I'm guessing a pretty convincing 8, possible 9. I'm going to put this one over here. Let's see. And then sometimes it's like, oh, is it the sleeve? Is it the card? Got a couple of things over there. One in this corner. Centering, not too bad. And then actually a couple of cards I was trying to look at. I feel like on the front side, you can see, sometimes see a little bit of like silvering on the sides. This one's not too bad. Corner is definitely a little whitened. Then some more damage down there. Uh, but actually, maybe you guys can see it for this card. If you kind of look like along this edge from all that light coming in, um, you see a little bit of light reflecting on that on this side. And I'm wondering how significant that is, or relevant that is to PSA. So yeah, if you have any uh, any insight into this, let me know. And then of my <laughs> collection I feel like these were the only ones that I felt were potentially even close but right off the bat I'm wondering if this is kind of off-centered when you compare the top and the bottom yeah centering is kind of confusing to me I'm not sure at what point it degrades to an automatic 9 oh I hate that this thing's in a top loader but so we will go through the effort of taking this thing out very carefully mmm this corner so a little bit of whitening there a little bit on this top as well. And I believe, yeah, so this one, I think you can see it again. Uh, kind of like that silvering on this side. How relevant is this for PSA? Um, does that kind of knock it down to starting at a nine right off the bat? If you happen to know, let me know in a comment down below. And this is the last one I feel I could possibly. Although, I, again, I feel like I see some silvering on this side again. From here, I'm unable to notice any other scratches. This corner, I feel like it's cut kind of strange, but I feel like other cards I've seen, I feel like I've seen that quite a bit. The top, only from certain angles, I feel like there's a little bit of damage on the top. Ooh, I, maybe there's some whitening here, but it's kind of hard to know. Oh, mm. I like I see it. This one's pretty close. I feel like this one probably be, I'm guessing, a safe 9. But whether it would get 10, hard to tell. Yeah, now you can really see that silvering on the side. So, yeah, that 10 to 1 ratio seems about right, and that's, you know, that's just 9 to 10 to 9 for getting 8s and a below. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's uh, maybe that makes sense why that price is so high, talking like up to like $1,700 for a PSA 10 Charizard. Um, and yeah, I haven't submitted anything to PSA, but I probably will submit some Charizards. Maybe it'll be these four as far as unlimited a limited Zards just to see if I can't get a couple nines and with the keeping my fingers crossed for that 10 grade although it feels very unlikely um, but uh, yeah it was a bit of a different opening and I figured I was going to do this anyway so I might as well record it and uh, if you have any experience with PSA and you have any thoughts any advice on how to go about picking what cards to submit let me know in a comment down below and uh, yeah other than that, guys, thanks for watching a bit of a different video. And uh, like, comment, subscribe all down below. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.